Etsy sells a lot of t-shirt designs and there's a lot of websites that sell t-shirt designs. But if you're interested, you can actually make this sort of design yourself using free software. Here's a whole bundle that's for sale. Lots of different packages. Here's a happy birthday t-shirt. The beauty if you can make these yourself is that you can customize them. So here's an example that says vintage limited edition 1981. And you could change this now to say 1982, 1984, 1997, whatever you want to do. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to make this sort of a design using free software. The key isn't so much using the font, although we'll cover that as well. It's using these little borders around the t-shirts because a lot of times this really takes the design to the next level and it says, hey, the font is fine, but it's these little extra pieces that really make the shirt. I'm a big fan of using really easy techniques. I don't want to spend a ton of time learning how to do stuff. So we're going to be using Inkscape today. And if you just go to inkscape.org, you can download this free software. It's completely free. There's no ads or anything in it. And we're going to get started in Inkscape. So again, I want to stress when you first open up Inkscape, if you're new to Inkscape, you've come to the right place. This is a tutorial designed for complete beginners on Inkscape on Inkscape and it can be difficult and frustrating to have to learn an entirely new program. So don't stress about all the menu items along the left hand side and there's menu items along the top and there's menu items along the right and there's a huge color palette on the bottom. Don't worry about all that stuff. What we're going to be looking at today is just over on the left we're going to be using just one tool and it's this text tool, this little A that I've just clicked on on the left hand side and from there, there is a drop down menu that I can now go in and I can look at all the different fonts. I've got a bazillion million fonts on my computer, probably too many fonts, but I'm just going to go through now and pick a font that I want to use for my t-shirt design. So I'm going to pick lemon mint. That's going to be my font. And then I'm just going to drag my mouse, make a, like a rectangle, drag my mouse and I'll just start typing. So I'll just type happy, that'll be one. Okay, so there's my one text. Then I'll click the little text button again and I'll make another little rectangle and I'll type birthday. That's it. Okay, so now I've got these two sitting here that I can move around. So if you ever want to modify a piece of the text, you can do so pretty easily. Right now I've got the actual text selected and I could modify it if I want by clicking the A and then going in and typing. So I can add to it, for example, or I can just change it to an actual vector and it's really easy to do. I just have the object selected and then I go up to path and I'm going to select the first option which is object to path. And when I do that, it changes this object to a true vector. Now it doesn't look like it, right now it looks the exact same, but if I move down to the next arrow in the menu and then I hover over any one of the letters, it now becomes a vector. But I don't have that option down below because down below is still a true text object. Upstairs though here with happy, it's an actual vector file. So if I just zoom in, you'll see I can move and modify the vector by moving and changing the actual vector, which is really a mathematical formula between nodes. So I could do that if I wanted. I'm just going to undo that and just back it up so that we're back to normal here. So that's one option. If you ever just need to slightly modify the text, you can do so as well. I'm just going to leave this though as is and I'm going to continue on. And really what I want to do now is have some borders on my t-shirt design and then I'll stick an, uh, an age in there as well. Okay, so remember these borders that we were looking at earlier? We want to come up with some sort of a border around our image or under our image or underlining, that sort of thing. And there's a couple areas you can go, I mean there's lots of different areas you can go online, but one that I like a lot is called Raw Pixel and it's just a free website. I'm going to type in border and then over on the right, there's a little filter where I can click public domain. 
and that's going to give me back all sorts of free public domain borders that I can use if I want to use you know any sort of old vintagey looking border so I'm going to pick something that I like and then I'm going to just use that as my trace so I'm going to use this little piece of mistletoe here maybe we're making a Christmas design for example and I'm going to download this and I'll put that into my little library another option is publicdomainvectors.org and I just searched in the search term window border I just typed that in and I got back lots of different results now you're going to get some sponsored results here at the top but as I scroll down you'll see there's borders that I can use here and I'm just looking for something that's clean okay so I've opened up my little mistletoe picture that I got from raw pixel and I don't really want the craft paper what I want to do is just take a trace of this mistletoe and just create a vector from it which will be really high quality when I zoom in it becomes quite pixelated and I don't want that so what I'm going to do instead is just click on the image and then go up to path trace bitmap that's going to open up a little screen over on the right hand side and the first thing I'm going to do is click this little update button because that's going to take a little mini photograph of what it is that I'm looking at so you can see here in the top right there's a little mini mistletoe now this brightness threshold that's what I really care about if I make it really really low brightness threshold and I click update it's going to look very light which is fine and if I make it really heavy goes up to one but if I go on near one and I click update it's going to go really dark so I want to have some of the little ribs inside the leaves showing so I'm actually going to go very very light on this one down to like maybe 20 and then this is just a preview so I don't know for sure if it's going to work or not so I'm just going to click OK and that's now going to take a preview of my mistletoe now it's a little lighter than I would like so I'm just going to go edit undo move edit undo trace bitmap and I'll try that one more time I'll click on the image and this time I'm going to change the brightness cutoff to about 40. so you have to play around a little bit with it I'll click OK and we can see here that's more what I was looking for I'll remove the original image just by clicking on it and clicking delete and now I've got my original copied to a vector and if I want to make sure it's a vector if you're not sure underneath the arrows there's the arrows with the nodes and you can see here now there's the nodes this is a vector I could move and adjust as needed it's an actual real vector file which is great so now I can just save this I can just go file save as and I can save it if you wanted to make it all red very easy to do that big color palette down at the bottom just click any color and it will change the color of all of the nodes and you can make it any color you like so I'm just going to leave it as black but I will just click file and save as and that will save it as an SVG file which is what I want which is a true vector okay so now I've got my happy birthday design back up and I'd like to insert a vector one of the many vectors that I grabbed online so I'm going to go to, I'm going to go to file and then import and then it's going to give me the vectors that I've grabbed now unfortunately my computer doesn't show a, a uh, preview of it but that's okay I know what I'm working with here I'm going to click on this mistletoe vector and that will import it and it will say import SVG image as an editable editable object yes I'm going to click OK and it's going to give me the actual vector and then I can just hold down the little control button and I can make it bigger or smaller as needed so I could do that and then I can go select it I could move it up here for example if it was like a Christmas design for example you could have this now bordering around in your design for example imagine this said happy, you know, Merry Christmas instead you can also edit and copy and then you can edit and paste and now you've got a second one if we want to flip it we would just go object and then we could say flip horizontal and that'll flip that holly horizontal click it move it up here and now we've got a couple pieces of border around our you can imagine if it said Merry Christmas or Happy Birthday that sort of thing we can go file and then import and let's say we want to do a corner 
So I grab this as well, include the SVG image as an editable object, we'll say yes. And this is now a corner that I grabbed off of raw pixel as well. And again, these are actual editable objects. So even if you just wanted to use one piece of it, you could. What if you just wanted to use that one swirl right here? That's okay, just select it, move it out. So I'm gonna move this right out of the remaining piece and just delete. So I'll go delete, delete, delete. It's a bit of work involved, but you can do it. You can also just click the shift key and you can select all of the pieces as well. There's not that many. I know it seems like a lot, but you get pretty fast at this stuff. And then I'll click the delete key. You can also click edit cut. You can get rid of it that way as well. And I'll just pick out the remaining stuff. And I'll click the delete key or edit cut. Oh, and we got two left. Edit cut. So now I'm left with this, okay? That's my piece that I wanted to use, okay? So you could use this and you could stretch it, for example, you could make it bigger, you could do whatever you like with it. So if, for example, if I wanna make it look like that, okay, and now I can go edit, copy, edit, paste. There's my second one, object, flip horizontal. And just like that, I've got two pieces sitting right there. I can even align them by clicking align horizontally. So I just took a piece out of a larger design and I just made it like that. Now I didn't even have to trace it. So again, these are very editable, infinitely clean, crisp designs that I can use. So if I get rid of the um, mistletoe, for example, edit and cut, and I'll click this one, edit and cut, oops cut there and click this one and go edit cut and now I've got a happy birthday design with my pieces in the middle I'll just show you a couple of the other ones here that I grabbed as well I grabbed I grabbed this floral design so you could also edit that down you could grab you know just the top piece of it there's a couple different options there And again, you can play around with these without having to make traces, which will get pixelated. You're not working in a PNG, you're actually working in true vectors at this point. So you can make these designs very crisp and clean. And so if you're using them as a digital download, if you're making them on Etsy, for example, or if you're selling them as a t-shirt, this is a great idea. So I'm just gonna click that and click delete. I'm gonna click that and click delete. And I'll stick my, my age down here so I'm gonna click my text button. I'll click inside the design and let's say we'll do 30, I wish. So we'll do 30 here and then I can just make it a bit bigger. So I'll just make this like 300 for example. And then you can just have that sitting there. You can make it bigger, smaller, that sort of thing. So there you go. Now you, again, using the borders, you could make it as complicated or as simple as you like. And then again, when you're done, you would just go file, save as, as an SVG file. And then you could save that as a digital download, as a t-shirt design, whatever it is you would like to do. You can also customize these. So if you create 50 templates and you have an Etsy store and somebody says, oh, grandpa's turning 99, not a problem. Open up the master file and then you can change this to 99 and happy birthday grandpa it's all good whatever you'd like to do so i hope you found that helpful a couple tips and tricks here you can make a very clean design completely free and you can scale it up huge in inkscape that's the big advantage versus a canva or, an, or a free uh, photo editor in inkscape it's infinitely scalable because you're working in a true vector software Hope you found that helpful, guys. Have a good one.